Hi guys! So today I'm filming a Q&A for you. I have never done one of these, but I have a ton of questions to answer. You guys left me questions on my Instagram. Just wanted to start off by saying thank you so, so much. This is just so surreal to me and super crazy. I just, I've gotten a ton of followers within the past few months. Like once I hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, it was just like an explosion. And now I'm almost at 50,000. I just hit 48,000 this morning when I woke up and I was super happy. So I thought what a perfect day to go ahead and film my Q&A. You guys gave me a lot of questions about makeup um, and how I got started into makeup and all that stuff. So I am going to answer them all for you today. And I hope I help you out or give you some advice or help with any question you were really wondering about. And I am gonna be saying people's names um, I'm going to put them at the bottom of the screen in case I say them wrong. I don't want to say them wrong, but just in case I do, they will be, like, right here somewhere. Okay? I, ha I got a lot of questions about, like, how I deal with hate comments. I got a lot of questions about how I got started and, like, the reason why I do makeup, um, and how I got started, like, on my Instagram, um, how I, how do you get, like, followers, how do you people to see your stuff, those are a lot of the main questions that I'm going to be answering today because I feel like those are really important and those are th all things, you know, at least with the hate and how to get followers are things that I've really been struggling with or that I struggled with um, before or things that I'm still dealing with, especially the haters. Like, I deal with a ton of haters. It's just something that comes with social media. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the questions. So since it is Halloween time, I'm going to go ahead and answer this one from Kate Jones. Her question is, what are your favorite horror movies and which horror movies do you think have the best special effects? Um, I truly love like old school serial killer movies. So like Halloween, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Of course, the very first Nightmare on Elm Street with Johnny Depp and his crop top. Yeah, that's the best one. Um, I love those, and I'm also a huge fan of The Conjuring, like the original Conjuring, The Conjuring. Um, the second one was really good too, but the first one, I just, I don't get scared from scary movies. Like, they, they don't scare me um, because I'm such a fan, but like, The Conjuring really freaked me out. Like, that was the first scary movie in years that literally terrified me, and that's why I loved it so much. I was like, you know... A lot of newer scary movies, at least, are just so similar, and they just all have the same effects and feels to them, and The Conjuring just really, I don't even know why, but, like, hit my sweet spot, and I was terrified for, like, a week after watching that movie. It was crazy. I also am a fan of, like, Tim Burton's. They're not really scary movies, but they have that weird kind of feel to them, like Nightmare Before Christmas, Edward Scissorhands. What type of paints do I use? This question is from... Rethgeier item? Rethgeier item? Sorry. The paints I use, I always use Miron's Paradise paint, so it's like the majority, it's like 90% of the paints that I use. I also do put product details in almost all my posts on Instagram and on every single video on YouTube. So you can always refer there just in case. Um, at least I'll put like four to six pictures of the look that I did for that day and at least one of them will have product details. But like I said, I usually always use Mayron Paradise paints. They are water-activated paints. For me, I personally like those the best because they come off easiest. Also, Wolf Face Art and FX paints are really good. Those were the very first paints I ever bought and I used. Um, so if you go back and look like really far down on my Instagram feed, a lot of my older looks were used or were done using Wolf Face Art and FX. And I'll just show you guys real quick. These are, these are the, this is the first palette I ever bought. Some stuff's missing. I think my little sister has my pink, something like that. I don't know. But this is the first palette that I ever bought when I first got into makeup. There's a local, like, makeup Halloween costume shop down in uh, Denver. And I go down there. It's called Disguises. It's really cool. If any of you live here in Colorado, I suggest going and checking out Disguises. It's a really, really cool shop. They have Halloween decorations. They have Halloween costumes. They have makeup, paints, wigs. They have a whole case dedicated to eyelashes. It's amazing. It's a really, really cool shop. So I highly suggest going there and checking it out. Checking it out. That's where I go and get my paints um, if I really need something. Otherwise, I'll just order it offline. 
And this was the first um, Mayron palette that I ever got, Paradise Paints. My stuff's really dirty, I'm sorry guys. But yeah, it came in just like a kid's face painting kit that came with like a few brushes, some sponges, and some other stuff too. It's just like a little basic thing. I've also bought like individual paints. These are the only these are the only individual paints that I have because I was seriously in dire need of black. Like black's obviously the main color that I use for like everything because you outline stuff in black. So I went ahead and went onto Mayron Makeup's website and I ordered both of these. And then I ran out of white recently too. So I went to Michael's and got this Snazaroo paint. Um, this is okay. This was like just like an emergency situation. This cracks a lot. It doesn't come out opaque in the first, it comes out pretty opaque in the first one, but like with white, obviously like you need to layer it because it's going to be streaky and patchy, like no matter what, it's white, it's just, it's just what happens. And um, the more you layer this, the more it gets like really dried out and cracks. So just be aware with this, I don't know if this is how like every color is, this is the, this is the only one that I've tried, so I would just be aware of that. But if you are looking to get into painting and you're new and more like a beginner, you can totally just go to Michael's and buy this stuff. Next question. This is from Krista Bella underscore. She says, how do things change when you become a public figure? How did you become a so damn good since you have posted a before pic of years back? I know practice, but I mean, did you learn from watching someone's videos? How do you take care of your skin? And how do you get free products to review? There's a lot of questions in that one. Um, so first off, I don't think of myself as a public figure. That's crazy that you say that. I just feel like a normal girl who likes to paint my face and people have just been noticing me so much lately. I've worked really hard to get that recognition, but I still don't really feel like a public figure. But things change because everybody has something to say. You'll get negative stuff constantly on your posts and it's like, I don't post to get negativity or opinions even. I post for people who like what I do and I'm not here to hear the opinions or the critiques. I don't ask for critiques. I don't ask for advice. I'm just posting as I'm learning and as I'm doing things and if people want to ride the ride with me then they are more than welcome to obviously. Um, so things change because I feel like everybody just feels like they need to put their two cents in with everything and it's just not necessary. I think I'm good <laughs> at paint but I definitely think I can get better. There's always room to grow. I just really honestly it's practice. Yes I watched a lot of videos. I watched so much Jordan Hans. Jordan Hans I love you so much. I watched a ton of her videos. Mikey from Glam and Glore glam and gore glam and gore i'm sure you know who she is and um just i, I love carly bible i love nicole guerrero uh, carly bible is like the first youtuber that i ever started watching um she's gorgeous i love her she's so great um and i i really like totally watched her videos all the time she's what helped me grow in the beauty aspect of makeup which is still something that i really really incorporate into all of my looks like i still put a lot of beauty into my crazy paints and my special effects makeups because that's just what I like and how I like to do it. So Carly, you helped me a lot too. And Jordan Hans really helped me when it came to painting, to bringing like a paint to life and to making it look more realistic and like on shading and all of that stuff. Jordan Hans helped me on that aspect and then Mikey helped me on the special effects, like the true special effects when it comes to like latex, all that kinds of stuff. So all three of those girls, mainly, um, were the ones that I learned so much from. My favorites, those three right there, my absolute favorites. And I just, I watched just so many YouTube videos when I first started, it's insane. I take care of my skin by always taking my makeup off every single night before I go to bed. Do not go to sleep with your makeup on. I cannot stress that enough. Toning my skin, cleaning my skin, moisturizing, um, doing masks. I wear a lot of makeup. Even right now, I'm wearing a lot of makeup. But putting paints into your pores and your skins is into your skin is really not good either. So just make sure you really clean it. Um, I can always make a video just on how I take care of my skin. If you guys are interested, let me know if you are interested in that. And how do you get free products to review? People just kind of contact you about it. Like I. People have just kind of, I've not really gotten too many free products, but I mean, people will just like direct message you or if you have like a business email, people will just email you and ask you if you want to try it and then you can tell them whether or not you're interested and they'll send you stuff. It's really quite simple, honestly.
Hey, it's Danette. Um, and she says, tell us a bit of your diabetic experience since I'm type 1 diabetic as well. Yes, I am a type 1 diabetic. It's something that I struggle with every single day. I've ha I got diagnosed when I was 19 years old. I was actually in the middle of beauty school. And um, I, I was working at Krispy Kreme Donuts and going to school full time. Uh, so I was really stressed out. I wasn't eating well. Um, and let me just kind of give you a background on diabetes. Like type 1 diabetes is a genetic form of diabetes. You don't get it from being unhealthy or eating too much sugar or being obese. It's not from that. Type 2 di Type 2 diabetes is from being unhealthy. Um, it can run in your family as well, but it's mainly from like being unhealthy. I have type 1, so it literally runs on my dad's side of the family, and that's why I got it. It's genetic. I got onset type 1 diabetes, which means it was in my system, but it wasn't really active. And then when I was, on, I was going through beauty school, working, eating unhealthy, all these things, all these stress factors came together, and um, it set on my diabetes, basically. That's why I got diagnosed uh, a little bit later on in life. Most people get diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at a very young age, as, as an infant, um, you know, 5, 7 years old, 12 years old even. I got diagnosed at 19 years old. So I went through my whole life eating like a regular person, eating whenever I wanted to, eating whatever I wanted to, and then unfortunately I got diagnosed later on in life. It's what happened. It's fine. I try to take care of myself as best as I can. I really enjoy like painting and makeup and all that is because it takes me to a whole nother world basically. It's like my therapy and it really puts me in a relaxing state of mind and people are like, I don't get how you have, you know, the patience to sit there for hours and paint your face and, and for me it's therapy, it's relaxing. I get to sit here with myself and my creativity and my brain and I really just get to like I really just get to produce something that makes me ha happy and it helps me relax and take my mind off of things. So um, I'm not a perfect diabetic. My sugars are not perfect right now. I've only had it for three and a half years and I'm still really struggling with it, but I'm trying. So, um, you know, I hope I can be an inspiration. I know Meiju looks a type 1 diabetic as well. If you've never seen her stuff, you should definitely go check her out. She's amazing, and she's a huge inspiration for me because she's a type 1 diabetic. And for me, that's just amazing because, you know, even if you don't have diabetes, if you have a different kind of disease or anything else, like, I hope that I can be an inspiration to you to still keep continuing on doing what you love, whether it's makeup, whether it's art, whether it's anything at all. Do what you love and, um, you know, don't let something get you down. Just keep doing, you know, keep doing you. Mia Doll Creations, she asks, are you a full-time makeup enthusiast or do you have another job? I find it difficult to balance between my military life and makeup life that I can't seem to do as much work as I want with it. What advice can you give people who are struggling to grow and find time? Actually, when I first started doing makeup, I was working a 40-hour full-time job at a place called Freaky's. It's a pipe shop slash uh, tattoo and piercing shop. Um, <clears throat> if you live in Colorado, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, when I first started, I was just a clerk there, um, and so my schedule was a little bit more lenient, I guess. Um, and then I, I was a, became a, an assistant manager, and that's what I've been doing for like the past year and a half there, as assistant manager. So I work weekend. I would work weekends, Thursday through Sunday. So I'd only have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to do makeup looks, and then like I'm going to the doctor and doing other things. So I really didn't have too much time for it. But, just, it, it's hard to go between both of those things. I'm not a makeup artist. I never was a makeup artist. I went to beauty school, but um, I just did makeup on... I just did makeup on myself, and I, I still do. I want to be a makeup artist one day, but right now, honestly, like, I'm still learning. I've only been doing this for a year. So, just practice on yourself and I'm sure being in the military is kind of hard to like do your makeup and go I don't know how they are on that but I would suggest like doing your makeup you know it sucks like having to get up an hour early or something but even a half hour early just to practice on yourself and try different things always try something different especially if you don't have a lot of time like try something different before you go somewhere or like when you are doing your makeup and that's what's going to help you grow honestly is like trying different things Lauren Michelle underscore 23 asked, what camera slash lighting slash backdrop do you use for your pics? They always look great. Mine come out so amateur. 
Um, so I just use, I bought a, literally like a black bed sheet from Walmart and I just, <laughs> I hang it up in my bathroom over my shower curtain and I turn the lights off and I have a mirror that's connected to my wall and then I hold my camera up so I can see what, you know, the angles that I'm getting in the mirror and I take the pictures. I use, the camera's not in here, but I use a Nikon L830 um, and what I do is I turn the expo I turn the light off. I turn the exposure down to like 0.3 or 0.7 and I turn the flash on. So I'm completely in the dark. I don't use any lighting in the with the pictures. I just use the flash from my camera. And that really helps looks, you know, come out darker and like lets the features come out darker, your contours, your colors, highlight will shine. It's really cool. I just use different backdrops. Sometimes I use like a red one. I have like a black and gray striped one. I have like a circus one that I've used a couple times. And then when it comes to like my videos, I use natural lighting. So that's why sometimes my videos might look a little foggy, but I don't have a ring light. I don't have any lighting for that. So I have to use natural lighting to get the best light source possible, which I don't think it's that bad. Um, I do want to get a ring light. Unfortunately, I'm just like not able to right now. Lupita MTZ1218 says, what are some essential products for people to invest in if they're looking to do a basic look? special effects and non-special effects and are on a budget but barely starting. Basically, where is the best place to start if you are interested in doing looks similar to yours? By the way, love your work. It really is so amazing. Well, thank you. So, things to invest in. Like, I know how it is not having money and really wanting to do makeup looks. That's how I kind of started off and I, I, you know, right now I really don't have the money to. I'm very lucky that I bought what I could when I did have money um, and I have stuff. I highly suggest buying a, a water activated paint palette and they are about 30 to 40 dollars but buying just that one will last you so long and it's so worth it I promise. So just buying a thing of liquid latex, having cotton, and having at least one eyeshadow palette. I highly suggest the Morphe palettes. I have one, it's just a 35C palette, it's all matte colors but I use it for everything. It has colors, it has matte colors, it has blacks, grays, browns, um, it has everything in it and that seriously works for like every single look that I do. They're only like 20 bucks too, super cheap. You buy them online. But um, I suggest getting one of those if you don't have the money to buy like expensive nicer palettes. And you don't need, you don't need the nicer expensive palettes, especially for the type of looks that I do. Um, because you use eyeshadows to like shade, you use eyeshadows to highlight, you use eyeshadows for the beauty. You use eyeshadows for everything when it comes to paint and special effects. So a makeup palette, an eyeshadow palette, and like your basic everyday beauty makeup. Foundation, eyeliner, mascara, maybe a lipstick or two. Those types of things are good for starting out. And just a couple of brushes. Like I don't use any fancy brushes. I, I literally just have random brushes. I don't have a brush set that I bought. It's just like random ones that came with some palettes. And then just like single ones that I've bought in places that are just a little bit smaller. I, they're just like random ones, honestly. Do I have any other talents um, besides makeup from Ashley's Her Name? Um, I can do hair. I graduated beauty school, like I said already. I can do hair. I can color. I color my own hair. I've done every single color imaginable. You can go back onto my Instagram and you can see that pretty far down. I'm good with using the computer. I love video games. I love Elder Scrolls. I don't know if that's a talent, but I think that's a talent. And it's a pretty good talent. What got me started by Glowed Up by Shay. So I will show the first makeup that I ever did right here. And um, that was the very first one I ever, ever, ever did. It is inspired from Pastel Pegasus on Instagram. You should go check her out. Her name is Ash Clements, and she's really awesome. I saw that look. I had never done any makeup like this, ever. And all I had was the Urban Decay Electric Palette and some, like, a few eyeliners and stuff. I really had nothing that would, like, pertain to the paint or the special effects part. I just had all these, you know, I just had, like, random beauty makeup. And I just went ahead and I went for it. I just w tried it, tried my own version, and I literally fell in love. Like, I had so much fun doing it. It was so fun. Um, that The next day, I went to the Halloween store because it was, like, the end of September, and the Halloween store by my house 
had opened. So I went there and I bought like liquid latex, I bought blood, I bought all kinds of stuff because I got so inspired to do more. And that like jump started it. I was doing them every minute that I had, every three days that I had off, I did a makeup look through the end of September to October. After Halloween was over, I unfortunately got really uninspired and I stopped doing makeup for about two months because I just couldn't produce anything. Everything I did produce, I hated. I didn't have any cool ideas. It was just a mess. So I stopped and then January came in and I had, I got inspired by some look I saw and he just tried my own version again and that I've been doing them like every week at least um, since then. Like, as an artist, I get artist block sometimes. Every once in a while, I'll get artist block. In the mornings and I'm trying to think of a look to do, sometimes I can't think of anything and I just wing it and it's like, sometimes it'll turn out, sometimes it won't. Nobody's perfect and every look's not going to be perfect and that's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect every time. Just do your best. If it doesn't work, try again tomorrow. What's your favorite part about makeup and how do you deal with makeup haters who feel like what you do is too much? Sending love. That is from Ol Olivipa underscore. Um, my favorite part about makeup is that you get to express yourself. You get to do whatever colors you're feeling that day, whatever colors are your favorite colors. You get to do so much with it. You get to transform your face. And for some people, they might think makeup is too much or it's unnecessary, but it makes some people feel beautiful. And that's what I love, is that like somebody could not feel very great about themselves and you could give them a makeover and they feel amazing. And they look in the mirror and they love what they look at. And for me personally, like, I don't dislike what I see in the mirror when I don't have makeup on. I just really enjoy putting makeup on. It's art. And if you disagree, I, I mean, people who say they have trust issues because of women wearing too much makeup, like befores and afters, it's obviously art. Look at the before face to the after face. You tell me that's not art? I cannot deal with haters. I am the worst with haters. I'm going to tell you first and foremost, I am a newer kind of... A uh, person not on social media, but dealing with like dealing with um, a lot of a lot going on on social media. I just recently grew to where I'm at now, so I get a lot of haters. Honestly, when before Suicide Squad was coming out and it was like Comic Con time, I was doing a lot of Harley Quinn stuff. Who is my absolute favorite? I love, love, love Harley Quinn, and um. A lot of people were like talking crap. <laughs> they were, they were, they were saying a lot of mean things. Um, people just assume that if you like the Suicide Squad Harley Quinn, that you don't know anything about any other Harley Quinn, and that's not true. I am a huge fan. Obviously, look at my hair. It's split down the middle, and it's half red, half black. I'm wearing a pudding necklace right now, too. I love Harley Quinn. Don't assume things with people and let people do what they want. And that's the same thing with makeup. Let people wear makeup. Is it your face? No. Why do you care so much? Meow. Meow. Um, I do snap back a lot. I'm not gonna lie. And honestly, I think that's okay. For people who think that it's not okay to stand up for yourselves, well then I'm not the person that you should be following because, like, I will snap back. And then people will come back and say, oh, this is, I'm just saying constructive criticism. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to help you out. Saying somebody's ugly, saying their makeup looks like shit, anything along those lines is not constructive criticism. And guess what? If somebody doesn't ask for constructive criticism or advice, don't put it where it ain't asked for. And that's simply what I say all the time, and then they'll be like, oh, well, it's social media. We're going to put our opinions if we want to. Okay, then I'm going to write what I want to say back to you because you're writing on my stuff, and I will say my opinion right back to you. And that's that I don't give a shit what you're saying. And then I will block you, and that's that. So, if you can, don't say anything back. Delete them. Block them. Delete their comment. Don't say anything back. Just don't do it, because it's not, it's not worth it. Honestly, they're trolls. They want to get a rise out of you, or they're jealous. And that sounds really cliche to say, but it's the honest truth. And um, if somebody can't be supportive, and another thing that irks me is makeup artists or people who are in the art industry who think it's okay to say something negative. Um, you're supposed to support each other. There are tons of things I come across on the internet that I don't like, that I 
think is stupid, that I don't agree with, but I never comment on it because guess what? My opinion doesn't matter that much and it's not going to change anything, so why would I waste my breath hurting someone's feelings, pissing somebody off when I can just think it in my own head and go on with my life? It's not that big of a deal. And guess what? Girls who wear a lot of makeup don't care about men who don't like that. I have, and I'm married. I've been with my, my man for seven years and he is okay with me packing tons of makeup on my face and he's okay with me not putting any on at all. So my advice for the haters, sorry that gets me a little worked up. I really hate people who have something negative to say all the time. My advice is just to delete them and block them and don't listen to them. Just keep doing what you want to do and that comes with the Harley Quinn thing. I've seen a lot of people hate on girls who like to dress up as Harley Quinn. All the hate about girls being Harley Quinn this Halloween. Who cares? Who cares? I'm okay with it. Who cares? It's a, it's a, it's like Batman or Spider-Man or, you know, all these people. They're like, she, yeah, people are obsessed with it right now. Who cares? People are obsessed with it. So what about vampires and werewolves? Those are all cliche Halloween costumes that people are every single year. Witches, ghosts. Those are things that people are every single year, so why does it matter so much about Harley Quinn? I just don't get it. I just don't. I just don't. Just ignore the haters. They're stupid and dumb and don't listen to them. That's what I got to say. All right. So some of these other questions are from previous posts that I've had, like, on my Q&As. Um, I posted a couple other ones. Um, so I just chose a few of them to do. I'm sorry that I can't answer them all, but I feel like I generally answered a lot already, um, so I didn't want to, like, re-ask questions or re-answer questions, I guess. But the next one is from one of my favorite ladies on social media, Gail Gorgeous. Gail, I love the shit out of you. Um, so basically, her question was, what is your goal with makeup in the next five years? Do you want to be on a TV show at all, or just continue to build your Facebook, IG, and YouTube following? Um, my goal within the next five years is to live in California and to have graduated, hopefully graduated, special effects beauty school, makeup school. I really want to do makeup for horror movies and sci-fi movies, like create aliens, um, do like the bloody parts of movies. I love really watching those parts in like horror movies um, because I, I'm so interested in how do they make it look so real? I just love it. I think it's really cool. Same with like aliens, monsters, all that kind of stuff. I really love it all. Honestly, for me, like I don't CGI sometimes. Okay, I get it, but like 95% of the time, you can create some sick ass makeup without having to use CGI. There are tons of makeup artists who can do really amazing work. You don't, I don't know, I think, I feel like it's really unnecessary to do CGI. I'd love to be on a TV show. I would love to be on like um, Skin Wars or um, that other one. Why can't I think of what it's called? Face Off. I would love to be on that too. It's really a fun show and it'd be super cool to do. Um, I still want to build my Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I really want to build my YouTube very large because I want to continue to teach people. That's what I started the YouTube for, is to teach people how to do stuff. Like, my Instagram and Facebook should inspire people, and I hope from there they go to my YouTube and learn how I do stuff um, because that's what I want to do. I just want to teach people, and I want people to know that you can start from being okay or not very good in your mind to growing and getting better it just takes practice and time from desiree.bell um what are your favorite looks to do mm, clowns i love doing clowns um they're my favorite or skulls skulls are super fun too i don't know why i love to do clowns they're just some of my favorite things to do that's why i'm so mad about the whole killer clown thing going on because i love clowns this is from Gothic Atheist, and her question is, how many piercings have you had? Altogether, I've had 16 piercings. Right now, the ones that have jewelry in them are my cheeks. 17, 17, sorry. <laughs> my cheeks, uh, my angel kiss or my vertical labray, my nipples, and my top and bottom of my belly button, and then I have my plugs, which are half inch, and I have two conch piercings right here. Um, I have had my second hole of my ears pierced as well, and I've had spider bites right here. You can kind of see. Um, and I've had my top belly button pierced three times. This is my third time. Yeah, my third time. <laughs> how long have you had your cheek piercings, and how was the healing process? This is from Lollycat14. I've had my cheek piercings for three years. Yeah, almost three years. And the healing process was a pain in the ass. 
they so are kind of healing, at least what I've heard from piercers, is that they're always kind of, they're never going to be fully healed, I guess. Um, that's what I've heard, at least. I don't know if that's true. It's just what I've heard. And I had to have them really long, like, I mean, really long when I first got them done, um, in case they, they swelled up. And my cheeks are really big, so yeah, I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll deal with the super long ones. Uh, I got to change them to shorter ones, like, two weeks later, and then to even shorter, like, a few weeks after that and then I finally got them out of the size that I want which are these ones uh, maybe like a year and a half two years ago they are a pain in the ass though I will tell you this one got ir really irritated once and got swollen and bloody and gross it was super it was horrible it was really bad um it went down I just had to like set it in some Epsom salt for a little bit and like really take care of it and I put a longer one in because it was just swollen just be careful. There are piercings that you really want to think about. They are very high maintenance. You have to take care of them. You can't just put short ones in right away. You have to have longer ones. And I would go talk to a piercer about it if I were you and really get some information on it. But I love them and I wouldn't change them for the world. I love my cheek piercings. I didn't have dimples before I got my cheeks pierced and I just think they're the cutest ever. I love them. How old are you and where are you from? And that's from flightless bird underscore American mouth. I am 22 years old. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and I moved here to Denver, Colorado about nine years ago when I was 14. 14. I was in the middle of eighth grade, um, and I've lived here for the past nine years. Um, and I turn 23 next month. My birthday is November 17th, so I'll be 23 next month. What is my favorite version of Harley Quinn from Simply Quinzel? My favorite version is the original from Batman the Animated Series, the first original one that came, she came out in like 92, 91, 92. Um, her, she's my favorite, absolute favorite. I love her, she's so cute. I also really do love the new 52 Harley. She's really cute too, that's what my hair is inspired from. I love all forms of her though. I love the Suicide Squad one too. I think Margot Robbie did a fabulous job playing Harley Quinn. I thought she was so cute. I love Harley, I just, I just love Harley Quinn. Just love her. I love comic books. I love video games. I love movies. I love all of it. I'm a nerd. That was my Q&A. I hope that helped with anything, any questions you might have about me, about makeup, any advice, anything at all. I just wanted to tell you guys again, thank you so much. It means the freaking world to me. And it's just so surreal to me that I have like this following and like that stuff growing my youtube my instagram all that that it's growing it feels so great i've worked so hard for the past year to get this and i've been all organically without paying for followers i've never paid for followers i've never paid for like advertisements i don't really do like shout outs for shout outs or share for shares ever i've just done this by doing hashtags and you know just continuously creating stuff don't ever stop creating stuff if this is what you want to do do it and again, thank you all so much. It means the world to me. And I hope that this Q&A helped you with anything you were curious about. And, you know, thank you. I don't have anything else to say. It's so surreal to me. It, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for always watching, for always liking and commenting and supporting. And, and thank you. I hope to be somewhere big one day and to make you all proud. Um, but yeah. If you guys are looking to do anything crazy for Halloween or need any ideas, go check out my YouTube or my Instagram. I'll link everything down below. Um, that's all I got to say. Thank you guys for watching.